Hey, what's happening, everybody? Welcome to the weekend recap live. Thank you all for joining us on this Sunday evening. Got a uh, decent amount of stuff this weekend. Nothing too crazy. Didn't go out anywhere today because of Father's Day and bad weather. But Eric and I hit up Rogers, Ohio on Friday. And we went out yesterday to a few places. But got some packs, so I figured we'd make it a live stream and rip some of those open. Also found a bunch of different 80s novelty stuff as well, as you can see. Hey, listen, Justin, Dave Durango, Chris Weaver. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. Yeah, I got some uh, Dino Riders things, which is pretty sweet. And um, the Visionaries Lunchbox, I was really pumped about that. Got a really good deal on that. And a um, bunch of packs, 94 Don Russ. But the one guy, Rogers, I usually always seem to find like random novelty stuff out there. But uh, one guy, not, uh, Rogers, had a bunch of Dino Riders stuff. Must have been from his personal collection. So this is all, these were a dollar a piece. Couldn't pass those up. And then um, the 200 piece puzzles you see in the back, Dino Riders. Also got those for a buck a piece. Couldn't turn it down. And I uh, already started watching the Dino Riders VHS tapes on the VCR TV combo that I picked up recently too, and they're pretty sweet. And then um, also at Rogers, two bucks for the Toxic Crusaders Hideous Hovercraft. I'm not sure if you guys ever got into Toxic Crusaders or not, but it was a cartoon based off of the Toxic Avenger uh, series. So I thought that was pretty sweet for two bucks. This is from 1991. Hey, Darren Comfort, welcome to the stream. Dave Durango says I gave away a pile of those Tyco Diner Riders tapes to VHS the other day. Oh, wow. That's crazy. I would definitely have bought those off you. I'm looking for old uh, VHS cartoons. So if any of you guys have any laying around that you don't want, like cartoons from the 80s, even some from the 90s, want to send them my way, I'll even pay you for them if you like. I'm pretty stoked to have that TV CR now so I can have that in my kitchen and eat cereal and uh, watch 80s cartoons. And then the Visionaries Lunchbox, this is a really, really good deal. Um, it's in great condition, as you can see. And there was a $20 price tag on it. I ended up getting it for $15. And it still has the original thermos, too, which is a super good deal. These usually sell for like 50 or $60 bucks, um, with the thermos in this condition. So I couldn't pass it up. $15. Bucks. My girlfriend, Brittany's in the stream. And $5 super chat from Jonathan H. It says, Dino Riders, ride or die. Love that. Good deal. Need the mop to go to the Toxic set. Starting the Super Chat Fund. Hope you had a good weekend. Thank you so much, Jonathan H. I really appreciate that, man. Please go and check him out and give him a sub if you have not yet. Um, thank you so much. Not doing the uh, the giveaways tonight. Didn't have a chance to get anything set up for those, so I apologize. Wanted to do them, but I literally just walked in the door from seeing John Wick 3. Got back like five minutes ago. If you guys haven't seen John Wick 3 yet, definitely go and check it out. It's freaking awesome. So just got back from that. Didn't have a chance uh, to do any of the trivia for the giveaways. It's at my parents' house for a lot of the day, too, as well. So Next time, Tuesday, when we do the uh, Turn Back to Clock Tuesday, the huge break we have lined up, we will be doing giveaways that night. It's probably going to be like a four- or five-hour break, I want to say. A lot of rack packs to rip through. Um... So hopefully you guys tune in for that. Turn back to clock Tuesday. We still have like, I don't know, close to 20 spots left open as well. So if you guys are looking to participate in the break, check it out on the eBay uh, page. The link is on YouTube. So this is another sick pickup for this weekend. My girlfriend Brittany saw this today and picked it up for me. Um, Hills Candle. And I think I missed a $5 super chat from Joe Mansman. Thank you so much, Joe. I really appreciate that, man. I'm actually going to be sending you something out here uh, this week uh, for your fan mail response. Really appreciate that. And here's a $2 Super Chat from Austin Farmer. It says, hey, John, happy Sunday. Hope you had a good day. Well, thanks a lot, Austin. Definitely did have a good day. I hope you had a good day as well. Spent uh, several hours at my parents' house for Father's Day and hung out with Eric over there as well. Then went and saw John, the new John Wick. So uh, ended up being a pretty good day, but it was kind of crappy because we got rained out here for the most part. So didn't hit any flea markets this morning. But... Um, off work next week, so I'm hoping that I can go out and actually do some traveling. And Eric's off uh, off work for the summer, so I might try to go out and uh, hit up some, I don't know, bigger card shows or something else, antique malls, um, you know, in the surrounding states. Dom G says, John, you got some press in the comments of CJ Ayers 
latest videos, he found a pile of loose food flutters in your sealed collection was mentioned. That's awesome, man. Uh, not familiar with CJ Air, but I'll definitely check that out. Love food fighters. Thanks for letting me know. And another five dollar super chat from Jonathan H says, "And this is just to your to fund your collecting. Got coughs and crooks coming to it. Hopefully by Friday as well. Some cards. That is awesome, man. Thank you so much, Jonathan H. I really appreciate that. I was pretty pumped when I picked up that Inferno coughs and crooks figure, and still need several more for uh, my collection to finish it off. But one of my favorite toy lines of all time. So I really, really appreciate that, Jonathan H. It's freaking awesome. But." Uh, Brittany saw us today at a coffee shop. Picked this up for me. It's a hill scented candle. It smells like the Hills snack bar for any of you guys that remember Hills. Hills wasn't in every state. It wasn't nationwide. So some of you guys might be like, what's that store? But Hills uh, was very, very popular for toys back in the 80s and 90s, at least for you know my generation. Hills was around a lot longer than that, but used to go there all the time. Picked up two rack packs as well. I thought these were really good deals at Rogers. 86 Don Russ with Clemens on the front. Second year for a buck. Couldn't beat that. We ripped that open. And this one I'm going to save. This is 88 Don Russ. I'm not a huge fan of 88 Don Russ, but it had Mark Grace rookie on the front. So um, we'll keep this one. Maybe I'll send it away to somebody or something like that. Have all the rookies out of that set. So keep that on the side. We're going to rip this one open. Sorry, I'm trying to read all these comments. Hey, my buddy Joe Filipowski is in the, uh, the chat. Hey, Joe. Didn't even see you sneak in here. I remember Mask, the Mask cartoon from the late 80s. Never had any toys when I was younger. They're so expensive to uh, pick up now. Very, very expensive, but I do come across them a decent amount. Joe Manchin said I had Woolworth, no hills. Centurions, yeah, those are pretty expensive now as well, too. Hey, you're welcome, Comfort. Uh, let's start with the 86 Don Russ, and then I picked up a ton of these at a flea market yesterday. This guy had these... And a five for a dollar bin, which I thought was a crazy deal. He had a bunch of 90 and 91 or 90 and 91 upper deck in his box, five for a dollar. And for whatever reason, he opened an entire box of 94 Don Russ and just tossed them in there, which these should not be in a five for a dollar bin, but um, made out on that one. I always like 94 Don Russ. I feel like Eric and I um, bought a decent amount of those cards back in 94. Good inserts in there as well, so we'll see if we can pull any of those. Joe Filipowski says, I don't want any. <laughs> we'll get to ripping the 86 Don Russ Rack Pack. Clemens' second year is on the top, so that's pretty sweet. Hopefully, we can find a, a McGriff rookie card. Nice Donnie Mattingly right there. Donnie Baseball. Nice one in the first stack. Like that card. I don't think I had that one. Paul O'Neill rookie card. Sweet. Very first pack. Paul O'Neill rookie card. Very, very nice. Have that one already, but. Uh, Nice card. Kind of a muffed up corner there, but Raleigh Fingers. And Vaughn Hayes. Heck of a first pack. And Hype is Here Collectibles with a $1.66 Super Chat. Thank you so much, Hype is Here Collectibles. Really appreciate that generosity, man. Um, definitely please go check him out. Give him a sub. But that's pretty sick, though. Uh, Paul O'Neill rookie card in the very first rack pack. Can't beat it. We already know we're getting Clemens in the... Uh, the next pack here. My brother is here. Hey, Eric. Just got back from the movies like 10 minutes ago. And i um, going to rip some packs here. There's Clemens' second year card. It's a nice one. Didn't have that one either. Be sweet if we can pull McGriff out of here. Ozzie Gian. Rookie is also in here. Hall of Famer Alan Trammell. And nothing else too great. Very last one for the 86 Don Russ Rack. Paul O'Neill Rookie. Didn't expect that one. I was just about to say his name. One of the people we were looking for in uh, these packs. Clint Hurdle. Ty Ganey. Andy Van Slyke. That's a cool one. And nothing else too great in there. Mike Easler, Cardi, top move on his swing. Should be in the Hall of Fame for that alone. Dave Durango. I haven't heard that name in a long time or seen one of his cards in a while. Ricky Clark says, Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. So we got a ton of 94 Don Russ to rip open. Hoping that these aren't bricks. Kind of felt like it. I want to say every one of these packs has one special edition card in them. 
guaranteed. JGW not good doing giveaways tonight. Didn't have a chance to do to set the trivia, so we'll resume the uh, giveaways on Tuesday. But I do appreciate all super chats, you guys. Very generous of you. These ones are probably all going to be bricks for the most part. I'm going to adjust this camera so it's a little easier. But um, some decent inserts in these. But I figure for 20 cents a pack, that's pretty good. I feel like boxes of these still sell for about 30 bucks a piece. Nice Tony Gwynn there. So I picked up a, a lot of uh, other packs of Upper Deck. I didn't show those. I'll give those out for Patreon and just send to people. Every once in a while, I'll throw in a special pack to uh, people to bind the breaks. And look who it is, Dave Durango, Move On Special Edition card. That's a pretty nice one. Move On Special Edition card, man. What are the odds of that? Very first pack. Everything Wisconsin card says, what's 94? Uh, really no good rookies in 94. There are some nice Hall of Famers, but the biggest thing we're looking for now in these is just looking for insert cards. Some decent ones. You can, of course, find Don Russ Elite cards in these, but the Elite cards in 94, are, I feel like they're more common than the ones in 91, 92. Doc Gooden. So these are all stuck together, kind of bricked up, but uh, there's no paper loss. So that's kind of a good thing. Joe says, I remember this set. Yeah, I feel like I put the whole Series 1 together by hand. That was like my project back then. Eric definitely remembers buying all these packs. We were actually just talking about these yesterday. That We th we think we bought more of these because of how bad the 94 Tops design is. 94 Tops is so such a bland set. The best card in there is probably like... I don't know, Piazza and Billy Wagner rookie garden. So a lot of these are bricked up, but no paper loss. I also bought two Fairfields today. I stopped and got my dad a card and whatnot at Rite Aid. So of course I couldn't turn down uh, walking past the Fairfield boxes. This is a nice one though for special edition. Hall of Famer Wade Boggs. So it's not a bad one at all. Probably like a, a buck, a buck fifty somewhere in that range. I think usually a special edition were like multiplied by two of whatever the regular base card is worth. So we have an Roberto Almore on top of this next pack. Roberto Almore, Hall of Famer there. Nothing too great yet. Austin Farmers is hopefully pull the trout rookie. <laughs> That'd be sick out of the Fairfield box. I feel like the new Fairfields are like, I don't know. There's, I feel like they're mostly crap. Unless you could find some of the old ones. Rondell White rated rookie. That's probably a pretty hard card back then. And truth be told, subscriber is a huge Dave Justice fan. So this is a Dave Justice special edition. So that's pretty cool though. The special edition cards we're pulling are like actually... Hall of Famers and Stars for the most part. I'm not pulling like Turk Wendell uh, special edition cards. Hey, that's truth be told. Guess my brother's leaving. See you later, Eric. Thanks for stopping by. Hall of Famer and Biggio there. Special edition Dave Justice for you, truth be told. Still no inserts yet. Dave Durango, yeah, you certainly could post a link in here, man. Definitely. I thought it was Juan Gonzalez for a second. It's Mario Diaz. Norm Charlton, and not really a great one here, but I used to like him a lot. Jay Bell, special edition. Probably about 10 cents. Jay Bell, uh, probably one of my favorite players in the late 80s. Because my favorite players back then were really all buckos Greg Jeffries and here is our first insert card Steve Avery Steve Avery had a solid career Bernie Williams and here's another super chat from Jonathan H for two dollars it says 
Did you do any Final Fantasy games as a kid, John? Thank you so much for that, Jonathan H. Um, funny you say that. Eric and I were absolutely obsessed with Final Fantasy VII. We spent many, many hours playing that game, leveling up and everything else. I don't know if he went on to play the other ones or not. Um, I went on to play 8, 9, 10, 10, 2, and then after that, I think I bought 12 and just never, ever started it. I didn't really care for 8 so much. I liked 9. I really liked 10 a lot. A lot of people don't really like 10, but uh, I thought the game was sick, minus the whole Blitzball thing. I thought it was pretty awesome. I, I went and bought the uh, remaster for PS3 and played through it again, but 10-2 I thought was pretty crappy. I, I don't know. I couldn't stand 10-2. The only reason I bought it is just to you know, play the continuation of the, of the first one, 10, but um, I don't know. It kind of got on my nerves and really, really annoyed me, but I thought 10 was absolutely amazing. Really liked the story to it. Liked everything about it. Um, you just didn't really care for Blitzball at all. Couldn't get into it. And then, yeah, I tried to get myself into it, and I just sucked at it. So I kind of just never followed through with that. But amazing game. Greg Olson Special Edition. John H. says, I met my wife on Final Fantasy XI, the MMO. The, I, I remember I was real pissed off when XI came out because it was PC only. And I never played XI. Steve Avery Diamond King is a pretty cool one. Not a lot of value to it, but still cool nonetheless. And Joe says that final boss did that dumb supernova move. Sephiroth. I was I remember being real bummed out whenever Eris died. And then I was like searching around trying to find a way to bring her back to life. That was like a rumor you could bring Eris back after he kills her. These are really bricked up bad. Really bad. Kind of looks like a repeat pack here. So you can get Donruss Elite cards out of these, but I think the odds are... I don't know. They're a lot more common to pull those out of these ones. 357 Magus, does anyone remember King's Quest games back on the PC? Yeah, I used to love King's Quest. I sucked at them real bad. I want to say we had King's Quest V for DOS... And then they actually, uh, they released the King's Quest games, was it either on PS4 or PS3, like the whole collection. And I thought about buying those, just to go back and uh, play them again. Eckersley, Special Edition, Hall of Famer there, it's pretty cool. Yeah, because back like when DOS was around, and all those games were out, there was no like uh, going on Google and just typing stuff in and, how do I do this? You had to like go buy the like, 40 hour strategy guide. You couldn't just search things online. Like now, it's so easy. Any, any video game you play, you literally just go on Google and just type in anything you want and have a walkthrough of it. Dave Holland Special Edition. Hey Chad, welcome to the stream. I think it was King's Quest V that I played through, and um, just like couldn't you get to a certain part and you couldn't figure out what to do, and then you just, I would just stop playing altogether, and then get like pissed off about it. And here's a nice one, very nice one. Ken Griffey Jr. Diamond Kings. Very nice. I remember this card. Probably the best one we can pull out of uh, those inserts. Ken Griffey Jr. Diamond Kings. Very nice. I think Chris Weaver's still in here. I'm sure he can appreciate that. Griffey Jr. Diamond Kings. Spanky LaValle. We went to, to the White Sox. Joe says, used to have that one. Definitely remember seeing that one. It's pretty nice. That one might be coming your way, Chris Weaver. Fan mail response this week. Wanted to get some stuff sent out tomorrow, but I don't know if I'm going to have time to do it or not now. Might have to be uh, Tuesday. Paul says, waiting for a John Hudek. Well, if we don't pull a Diamond King, we have the John Hudek autograph right here. Sent to us by Chris Weaver and Chris Sabo as well, in case you guys didn't catch that fan mail from the other night. So Diamond Kings are pretty common to pull out of these. Pulled two already out of a, a few packs. There's Ripken. It's a nice one. Here's like a George Brett tribute card in here as well, which uh, would be kind of cool to pull that. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that, Joe, but somebody sent me a Chris Sabo autograph. Chat, or, uh, Chris Weaver sent me Chris Sabo autograph. And John Hudak is kind of running a joke of the channel too due to past breaks. There's a Henderson special edition. That's a nice one. And Manny Ramirez. I always used to like that card. The rated rookie. 
Chad Hawkins says that was a sick package Chris Weaver sent. Yeah, it definitely was. No doubt about it. You guys all sent awesome packages. I'm going to be getting stuff out to you guys uh, this week. Like I said, it probably won't be tomorrow just because um, I work tomorrow, unfortunately. And here's a $5 super chat from Dallas Foster. It says, what's up, John and everyone? Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Thanks so much, Dallas Foster. Really appreciate that, man. Not sure if you're a dad or not, but if you are, happy Father's Day to you as well. Really appreciate that super chat, man. Very nice of you. These ones are bricked up pretty bad. You know, Dallas Foster has two spots in the big break we're doing um, on Tuesday. Probably going to start like pretty early, too, because... Uh, we have, let's see here, we've got a lot of rack packs to open up, a lot. So I might start at like 6 p.m. Obviously, you guys aren't all going to be able to join us that early, but uh, I'd, like, I'd like the break to be over at like 11 o'clock. Sheffield, special edition, not a nice one. So it might be like a 6 p.m. break until 11 or something like that, however long it takes to rip through all those rack packs. And Eric is going to come over and uh, help out at some point, too. So looking forward to that. Pulse is 6 p.m. be perfect for you. Awesome. Yeah, I never done one that early, I don't think, before. But um, like I said, I don't want to be up till one o'clock in the morning uh, ripping open packs like the last time. Chad says just bought Collector's Choice, 94, 95, and I had to unbrick the entire thing. That sucks. I think Eric just picked up a 95 Collector's Choice box. Here's a nice one. Cecil Fielder. Insert card. These ones are a little more rare to pull. Dominators. I'm trying to be real careful here because I don't want to crack them. Hey, Adam Y. I always like these cards. Dominators. Pretty sweet. It's the first card of the set, too. So, pretty decent one. Cecil Fielder. There's some better ones in the set than that one, but better than it being a Greg Swindell, right? Because no one likes Greg Swindell. Joe says that was probably valuable at one time. Yeah, more than likely. There's a Robin Ventura special edition. And those are stuck together. David Need. David Need was a pretty big prospect back in that time era. I want to say David Need's rookie is actually 94, I think. 93, not, actually 93 is his rookie. All right, Tony Gwynn on top here. Joe says, what's wrong with Greg Swindell? Greg Swindell is kind of like a bad omen for us because we did the 92 Don Russ break and we kept pulling his freaking diamond. <laughs> oh, what is going on here? What is going on? Here he is again. I think this is like the second or third time we've seen him tonight. Greg Swindell. Speaking of him. Yeah, we kept pulling his Diamond Kings cards and out of the 92 Don Russ break. Like, there's a bunch of decent like stars that are in that set, and there's a couple of, like crappy ones. Like, And he's one of them. Hey, thanks a lot, Lucky Lucky. Appreciate that, man. Hey, Randy, welcome to the stream. Yeah, please take a second to like the video, if you will. At, uh, the more likes you get for videos, the more YouTube throws your video out there and suggests it to other people. It's Chuck Knobloch, or as Joe used to call him, Chuck Koblock, I believe. I think that's what it was, right, Joe? Chuck Koblock. He was definitely a big prospect back in 1990. More bricks here. Tony Pena, Chad Curtis. So we have, um, there's another move on for you, Dave Durango. Yeah, that was a bad omen. We got a few bad omens on this channel. Like Eric has John Wathen. I have Chris Sabo, John Hudek, and Greg Swindell. And this one is nice. This is a nice one. We saw the regular card earlier. Ripken Special Edition card. Very nice. Probably with a few bucks there. And we have uh, four packs left. Like I said, I have um, I picked these up today too because I'm a sucker for Fairfields. Like when I go to the drugstore, they have those like taunting you at the front register, and I I don't know I can't uh, I can't leave without buying at least one of them. 
And I just think to myself, well, what if I buy one of them, don't pull the hit, and the hit's in the other one that I passed up, so I better buy both of them. Rob Pedrick says, I like collecting older toys also. That's awesome. What, what toy lines do you collect? I want to actually start getting some Dino Rider stuff. I never had those toys when I was younger, but they're freaking awesome. If you go online and like look look up the those toy lines, they're pretty sick. Kind of expensive though. Some of the dinosaur figures loose are like 200 bucks. And look who it is. So they're all out tonight. The man himself decided to join us as well. Old Sabo. Joe says those toys were cool. And Cecil Fielder. Special edition card there. Three more packs left. And we'll do a Fairfield box. See if we pull any uh, prominent rookies out of there. So far, uh, these packs have been pretty good, though. The 86 Don Ross having Paul O'Neill rookie card in the very first pack. And then some Hall of Famers in there. Speaking of Hall of Famers, there's John Smoltz. Or Greg Jeffries. Hopefully he's not going to become the new omen of the channel. The third or fourth time we've seen him. Yeah, I don't think I'd ever want to do a break on these box. Joe says, what's cooler than running dinosaurs and shooting lasers? Yeah, it's pretty tough to beat that. And looks like we have Kenny Lofton special edition. It's Kenny Lofton. Two more packs. Sheffield on top. Yeah, I kind of want to do a break at like 93 upper deck, but um, that break would probably take three hours for one box because you have to do this with every single card. Hey, look at discounts. Welcome to the stream. Uh, I don't know if I told you guys or not, but um, you may have seen that 93 upper deck pack that I have. Uh, opened probably two weeks ago and pulled a Jeter and Jeter was on the very back. Well, I got the Jeter off without any paper loss at all and without really doing anything crazy. I think I have it right with me somewhere. I did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so Jeter was on the very back of the pack. This is the Jeter. Um, kind of a little blemish. Two little blemishes there, but not too bad. Really no significant paper loss. Put in the freezer for two days and uh, didn't really do anything. But I just left it sitting out for, I don't know, probably two weeks close to it. And then I just started pulling cards off the other side. And look who it is again. So Greg Swindell, the new omen, going strong here. A lot of Cecil Fielders too, and Sheffields. Hey, W. Vogs, welcome to the stream. Yeah, so the Jeter survived. I was going to do the microwave trick. Here's a nice one. Another Dominator's card, and it's Fred McGriff. These were pretty hot cards back in 94. Still have some value to them, a few bucks here and there. But I um, like that one a lot, Fred McGriff. I think Fred McGriff should be in the Hall of Fame. I Hopefully he is sometime in the next few years. And my buddy Joe says, I'm trying to start a channel as well. Probably won't be as good. I'm sure it uh, will be, man. Turk Wendell, keep seeing him too. And another Chris Sabo, so we can't escape him, Kevin Apier. And another Sabo to end out the pack. Here's a two dollar super chat from Chad Hopkins. It says, Happy Father's Day to all. Thanks, John, for all you do. Thank you so much, Chad Hopkins. Really appreciate that super chat. I'm going to have a package uh, going out to you here in a few days. Hopefully by Tuesday at the latest. Really appreciate the toys you sent me and the notes. I actually have them sitting right next to me right now. Chad Hoffman is a good friend of the channel. And um, two boxes here. I figure I might as well rip both these. And here's a $2 super chat from Jonathan H. It says, John, can you remind me of yours and Eric's emails? Thank you so much, Jonathan. Very generous of you. That's like your fifth or sixth super chat today. Um, my email is just to pass is alive live toys with periods in between it at Gmail. And uh, Eric's is this the jabs fam at Gmail, I want to say. I put uh, my email in every description for each video. Should be in, uh, it'll be in the one from that I posted on Friday too. So there's a pack of 91 Studio. Maybe we'll pull a Jeff Bagwell rookie card out of there. He's the best one in that set. 
but you know how these go pharmacy boxes a lot of uh, junk wax common cards and then Adam Dunn from 2008 tops I believe and they have them going every single which way thank you Jonathan H I really appreciate that man so we have some 94 Don Russ in here Jeff Kent you always like Jeff Kent uh, there's a Mike Trout card not his rookie card obviously but still kind of cool to pull Trout Mike Lansing minor league card gold card Raphael Palmiro, Dave Stewart, and a lot of Dave Stewart cards in a row. Not sure what happened at the Fairfield Warehouse when this was going on. Dave Stewart, Dave Stewart, Dave Stewart, Dave Stewart. So four in a row. 290 on Ross kind of screwed me on that one, but this card's kind of cool. And I don't know if I've ever seen those. 90 Fleer insert card, probably worth about a nickel. Paul Coleman, never panned out. It's maybe five tops in here. Maybe they screwed up and put a. Uh, McGuire or Clemens in, but I doubt it. Joe says, Jeff Kent didn't even like baseball, but played for money. He was definitely a good ball player, Reggie Sanders. Dave LaPointe, I always hated that guy. I'm not really sure why. He was in the Buckos there for a little while. Never liked him. Damon Easley. So you see what you kind of get out of um, pharmacy boxes. I'm sure most of you guys have dove into these before they're hard to resist when you see them because you can pull some decent cards out here and there hey eric welcome back jack mcdowell eric davis harold reynolds so a lot of times fairfield boxes aren't really worth it i know five below has like a new thing which is like a five dollar uh plastic case i haven't taken the dive yet to buy one of those but i think it'd be kind of fun to rip some of those open check them out see if there's anything good i doubt there is but Here's a two dollar super chat from Austin Farmer. It says, "Just some money to keep the past alive." Love the channel. Thanks so much, man. I really appreciate your support, Austin. It means a lot to me, man. And we have some '93 Fleer. Never really liked that set at all. Kevin Young victory card. They really do a good job of throwing these every single which way. My my brother says I found an OJ Simpson 1970 box topper in that five dollar box of cards that I bought at the flea market. It looks like it's a rookie. That is insane, man. Wow. That is absolutely crazy. Speaking of OJ Simpson, he just made his he just made his own Twitter account. Was that like Friday evening or something like that? Like 25,000 25, followers already? Probably more than that now. OJ Simpson. There's another move on, Dave Durango. So this uh, Fairfield box is absolutely awful. It's probably the worst one that I've ever even gone through. Dave Justice, for you truth be told. Like, this is very terrible. 91 Fleer. Wouldn't be a crap box without 91 Fleer in there and, and two Dave LaPointe cards. 86 checklist. They, they just didn't even try to put any good in here. Tim Salmon. Probably the best card we've seen so far. Other than that Trout. Some 92 upper deck. I remember these circuit cards. Never really cared for these. I don't know why. I actually forgot about those. Brian Goodwin. Charlie Blackman and some sort of Warren Spawn reprint card from like 2018, I think. Dusty says there's a football card in there. I didn't even notice that. It's too busy. Yeah, you're right, though. There was a football card in there. What was I thinking? Yeah, Keith Taylor. What is that, 89 tops? think yeah, it's kind of weird I feel cheated rip through this 91 studio this set's pretty crappy I said Jeff Bagwell rookie card is in here um, no they're good rookies they're Jay Belligan Sid Bream Pirates Pack Oil Can Boyd Andy Bennis Rob Dibble I know Joe will appreciate that one Joe Carter Ray Lankford Sean Dunstan and Tom Herr so not even any uh Hall of Famers in that one. A pretty crap pack. So I might as well rip open this second one. See if we can pull an auto. Usually when you pull autos out of here, they're, they're usually duds for the most part. Players that didn't pan out or things along those lines. From five, six years ago, usually. Joe says, hate Rob Dibble. Yeah, I never really cared for Rob Dibble myself either. So we got one last uh, Fairfield box here ripped through. Buster Posey. Just, what is this? What kind of rip-off is this? How many Jose Batista's cards are going to throw at me? What is up with that, Fairfield? 
What is, what gives? Seven Jose Batista cards. That is, that's ridiculous. Seven of them. I'm not even trying anymore at this point. That's ridiculous. So is Jose Batista the new omen to look out for, I guess? I think I missed a super chat back there. A uh, two-dollar super chat from three five seven maggot says, "I didn't know the hills made ragu sauce." <laughs> Thank you so much, man. It, it does look like ragu sauce. It's actually a candle. Uh, it smells like the Hills snack bar for you guys that are familiar with Hills um, popcorn and I and uh, ices, main machado. Yeah, my girlfriend picked it up for me today. She saw it at a coffee shop. I was like, I know there's a Smoltz rookie card. Okay, so that's pretty random. I'm sure the people of Fairfield didn't realize that was his rookie card. Probably the best card I've ever pulled out of a Fairfield box, honestly. Smoltz rookie. Doesn't really happen ever. Pulling older rookies out of here, at least not to my uh, knowledge. Sandy Almar. It's maybe four tops, but they couldn't have uh, given us anyone good. Kirk Gibson, not bad. No Mattingly or Strawberry rookies, though. Bernie Williams. I remember this set. I actually haven't seen this one in a long time. The older um, mid-90s Leaf set. And here's a horribly cut... Mark Bailey, 85 Tops card. Horrible. That is awful. Dave Winfield, 90 Don Russ. So there's a Hall of Famer there, Luis Gonzalez. I've seen a little bit more different uh, brands at least. But um, nothing too crazy. John Smoltz, 89 Tops rookie card though. It's pretty good shape too. Pretty nice centering. Can't believe that was in a Fairfield box. Pretty wild. 93 Fleer, kind of saw that one coming. On the side of the box, could tell right away. 93 Fleer is a pretty crap set for the most part. Dale Norris, Charlie Blackman. Looks like someone cut that from a cereal box. Yeah, it looks pretty bad, man. Paul says that the Smoltz made the whole box worthwhile. Yeah, it's definitely saved the box. It doesn't look like we're getting a hit in here. The hit's usually in the middle. Danny says, I found some old wrestling figures this past weekend. That's pretty awesome. I still have a ton of wrestling figures from that tote I bought. There's a Bo Jackson 91 upper deck. White Sox card there. Charlie Huff, the oldest person alive. And some crappy 91 cards. 92 upper deck. The last of the stack here. Doesn't look like we're getting a hit. That's cut horrible too. Bob Stanley. So, the new Fairfield boxes are pretty disappointing. They're pretty much trash. There's Bill Buckner, rest in peace, Bill Buckner, and Raul Montese. Enjoy your time behind bars. And uh, these are the older stadium, or actually these are late 90s stadium club cards. 98 stadium club. It's like right after I got out of collecting. I don't remember really seeing those too often. Often Otani and Trout. And Ryan McMahon. Um, what is this, 2018 Tops Fire, I believe. Rookie card, so I'm not sure if there's any value to that or not. And Diamondbacks as well. And we have one more pack to open here. Before we part ways. 93 Fleer. Appreciate you guys for all joining me tonight. Um, like I said, there's still some spots left for the Turn Back to Clock Tuesday break. Um, 80s rack pack break. Or rack box break, I should say. A couple cases of those. They are on my eBay. The pass is alive. There's a nice Greg Maddox. I always liked how they did this on the bottom, like the updates signed by the Braves. So final Greg Max Cubs card there. And Hall of Fame Edgar Martinez and Robin Ventura. Nothing too great out of this set. The uh, the best card, really, 93 Fleer is Jim Edmonds, but he's in the uh, final edition set. And Scott Ruskin. So nothing too crazy. But the Smoltz... Definitely made it worth it. I think I have like five of this card already, so I'm not really too stoked about that. The 94 Don Russ was pretty decent, and the 86 Don Russ Rack Pack was pretty awesome, too. For you guys that joined in late to the stream, um, very, very first pack, 86 Don Russ, we pulled a Paul O'Neill rookie card, so that's nice. Probably end up giving this away the next live stream, so keep an eye out for that on Tuesday. It's probably going to be like 6 p.m., and... Um, We'll be ripping through a lot of rack packs from 86 up through 89. So join us then. But uh, I really appreciate all the Super Chat guys. Uh, thank you for joining us. I'm going to get out of here now. It's getting kind of late. i got to work tomorrow. And I uh, still have to do some work and pack some package some things up to ship out. So enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys.